How does a game that's 10 years old even compete with a game that's two months old? I'm talking about Path of Exile and Diablo 4. Path of Exile is graphically inferior. Diablo 4, beautiful, gorgeous, more up to date. How is Path of Exile in the same league? Because I'm going to show you some statistics that just crazy that it is what it is so we're going to discuss that today because i feel it comes down to one core issue and we're going to discuss that see you on the other side so what statistic was i referring to this one this is a stat that I think is very revealing. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm comparing Diablo 4 to Path of Exile. And this is Google Analytics, right? So people showing interest in both games. And I did worldwide. And of course, because Diablo 4 is only, you know, 60 plus days old, uh, we did a 90 day um, analysis here and as you can see when the game was launched not even close right so Diablo 4 is in blue Path of Exile is in red however on August 7th so Diablo 4 has always been since its launch far superior in popularity on the web YouTube Google then Path of Exile. But on August 17th, that all changed. I can understand if we were in PoE 2, then it would be a whole different ball of wax. But what is it? The style of the development teams, like the methodology, right? You, you hear, I, I make a lot of sports references, but you hear in sports, right? Like the team, have you ever heard the expression, the team takes on how the coach's vibe is, right? Like in in hockey, if the coach is like a badass, you know, he's an ex-player and was a fighter, the team typically is also hard-nosed and fights and plays with an edge, right? So my point is after have after seeing tons of videos on the Diablo 4 team, and the GGG team. And I'm going to share with you some of the clips. To me, it's clear why a game that shouldn't even be in the discussion is now taken over a game that had so much hype, like started off the gate with unbelievable success right let's paint a picture from that day okay june right that's that was the scenario there shouldn't even be a discussion moving forward how the picture should look it should look like the beginning of this graph where the blue is up here and the red is almost a zero with interest, right? But no, the 10 year old game is now higher than the brand new game. And it comes down to the mentality of the development team, basically. And the methodology that the development team at GG Games adopts is just more susceptible to be successful compared to the Diablo 4 team. And I'll give you some, before I'll show you some clips, actually, you know what? Let's see some clips. So at Gamescom, this German interviewer, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, did an interview with the PAX, the Path of Exile dev team. And I'm going to, illustrate to you why I feel the main reason why 
Path of Exile can maintain strength in its genre, even though it's 10 years old, is because of the leadership and the methodology that the dev team at Path of Exile use. It's their methodology of how they want the game to work, operate, and how they go about doing it. And it's that strategy that sets them apart from many, many, many games, and specifically D4, and it's how they surpassed D4 two months into Diablo 4 coming out. It's clear to me the two styles are so different between the two. And like I said, it's what drives the success of one game over the other. Um, so we're going to listen to a couple of questions, the responses, and then I'm kind of just going to highlight what I pulled out of the question answer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So PUE one and two will be separate games, and PUE one has ruthless mode. So can we expect some kind of yeah power, more power creep, more broken mechanics in PUE one again, or is it like like we had it in the last few leaks, so that there are not so many very broken combinations. Well, I think some degree of power creep is inevitable. It's very difficult for us to not introduce content to the game that helps yeah. increase the power cap of players. And while we're trying to be mindful of it, we know Path of Exile has been out for more than 10 years already. It's got more than 10 years of life left in it. We want to be careful to not uh, have too much incremental power creep year after year, but certainly it's inevitable that players will continue to gain more power over time and find more crazy ways to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have now received... Notice Chris Wilson here did... Ne you know, he answered the question relatively good in the sense that they're aware that players incrementally are going to get stronger and build their characters and classes stronger. And you notice when he responded, he never used the word buff or he never used the word we need to manage expectations of our player base he didn't he quite the opposite he actually said we acknowledge it players gonna figure out how to make their builds stronger we accept it you know just the styles are so different received a few new support gems in 322 uh, can we expect more major numerical changes to skill gems in Path of Exile 1 in the next upcoming leaks. So in terms of numerical changes, I mean, broadly speaking, we do of course want to buff underused things, but for many of the ones we have at the moment, it's not really a matter of just changing the numbers. For those mm -hmm. ones, we've done experimentation and where we can change the numbers in a quick way, we've done so. Many of the ones at the moment that need buffs need a bit more of a mechanical rework or a bit of taking back to the drawing board and making better. And that's something we've been doing in various ways. For example, we've been, you know, overhauling ascendancy classes and so on occasionally, occasionally doing gem reworks. But we found that in some cases it's easier to introduce new options than to change too much about how an existing thing works because even though the thing may feel underused, it's still being used by some number of builds and we have mm -hmm. to be careful to not accidentally ruin them as yeah. we improve it for the other players. So if you if you want to change one gem, you want to rework it, right? To be a lot better, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. How many times did he say buff? Many times. How many times did he say nerf? Zero times. And the other thing that I took away from that response is a sense of respect that they're so cognizant. Yeah, sure. We know the numbers. We look at the numbers. Something's not working. You know, we're very careful on changing things. We rather introduce other things because there's players that are using those things and we don't want to kill what they're using. It, it's just, um, it's a sign of respect 
for their players and also an understanding the, that they know that what they do impacts each and every player um, to a certain degree and they respect that so it's just so telling the responses that you get a sense like i don't know what how you guys feel but again just from the couple of remarks that they've made already and we're going to watch a little bit more you just get a sense that they know exactly what's going on they respect the player base they understand the game and they're very methodical on what to do um and very respectful of that at least that's what i took away so let's listen some more one question i have asked myself a lot of times uh, how are league mechanics created how how can you can you describe the process so is it like you are sitting on a big round table and uh, everyone's <laughs> this should be interesting ideas so how how, are, how do they come up with the league how, mechanics how, how every three months how you get your basically is what he's from. asking them honestly it, there are so many different ways we come up with leagues for a while one of our favorite ways was to scroll through netflix and try to find <laughs> movie ideas that could become cool leagues like it just inspires you you know you see a heist movie and think we could do that for example okay and, um, I think it's the case with just about any kind of ideation. Um, like you really, it's very hard to just sit down with no, uh, with nothing and come up with ideas. Yeah. Um, like when I'm trying to come up with ideas for anything, I often just go to Path of Exile areas and walk around a little bit. And uh, as I'm just looking at things, somehow it just inspires uh, thoughts about other things. But yes, as Chris said, like, you know, you scroll down a bunch of movie posts. Wow, Jonathan, when he's lacking ideas for a new leak, He'll go in the game and walk around areas. <laughs> wow. Posters and like as you're looking at them, you're just uh, coming up with things. And I think just it's, it's a good way of brainstorming, just like looking at stuff in front of you and just letting ideas uh, come from that. Okay. How far away or how far ahead are leaks planned, set? Uh, we usually don't plan further. So sorry for stopping the video. So the question is, how far out do they plan? I'm going to back this video up. Okay. How far away or how far ahead are leaks planned, set? Uh, we usually don't plan further ahead than the one that we're currently working on. Oh. So, for example, at the moment we're working on 323 that's coming out, you know, okay. towards the end of the year. We have no idea what 324 is. Like, I could, I could tell you okay. zero facts about 324, but 323 I could tell you quite a lot about. Okay. It's, actually, it's actually very important to do that because if you plan things too early then you can't respond to what the players needs are mm -hmm. um, you're just kind of making something for like people who are already six months out of date yeah. um, so it's kind of important to uh, be able to respond quickly okay and <laughs> another huge distinction between the two so we know d4 has 700 teams you know odd season even season live game team expansion team you know they're working way out and look at the difference with path of exile with jonathan and chris where they do not go past so there's the league that's live that they're on and working and trying to deal with any kind of issue as quickly as possible and then simultaneously, they're working with the, the next league. So right now we're in 3.22. They're working on 3.23. They have no idea what 3.24 is going to look like. And that is five months out, right? Uh, give or take. So again, different styles. And the two styles, the huge difference that comes out is response reaction the structure that poe has lends itself to being more reactive and dealing with the live game and the next league coming up deals that they can deal with it much quicker more responsive and actually address the players issues or issues they've uncovered way quicker this is a mindset. It's these are leaders of the company. It's a mindset. 
it and that resonates and is in the fabric of the company and it's felt at the game level this is the point of my video on what i feel is the core difference between the two the core difference in that response alone speaks volumes they're one league out that's it they don't go past they have no idea what 3.24 is going to be like it's a very telling response any thoughts to preserving the PUE one experience like in a SSF offline mode or something like this? I, I understand what you're asking for here. If Path of Exile 2 is massively successful and every player moves over there, then would we still continue to run PUE one But we would. It's very inexpensive to run an empty game server. Um, having said that, we do not expect it to be empty. We're going to produce some very high quality PUE one content and we're honestly expecting that users will jump between the two games quite a lot. So. Um, there's really there's really no reason to ever need to shut down Path of Exile 1 servers if that's what you're worried about. Yeah. Like that, I, I, I can't imagine a scenario where that would be something we'd choose to do because, as Chris just said, um, like uh, the infrastructure for it um, is entirely scalable with the number of players. Um, so, like, if there's not many players, um, then, uh, the, then there's, it costs us nothing. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, if we're not worried about like having the servers just running. And uh, it uses the same backend as Path of Exile 2 does, so it's ultimately the same service. So it really... Um, it, there's not really any fixed costs we need to be worried about. Like, so long as Path of Exile 2 is running, there's no reason not to have Path of Exile 1 also running uh, on the same backend infrastructure at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, it's perfect. Crazy good. What a, what a response. I, I, the more I listen to these two gentlemen talk, the more um, they're just... And don't get me wrong, Path of Exile is not a perfect game. It has issues has a lot of issues. I know there's problems in the game. I know the player, its player base complains about the game and not everything can be addressed and fixed. But when you hear Chris and Jonathan respond to questions, you really, at least I do, you get a sense of honesty. You get a sense that they really don't have to hide much and, and, you know, all developers, of course, they can't share everything. They got to keep certain things to their chest. But what, how, how, what kind of, what a response? Like, what are you going to do if PO, PO, PoE2 is so popular, you're still going to have PO, PoE1 running? And there's like, I, I, what are you going to do with the servers? Would you contemplate going offline mode if there's nobody, as many playing? poe when poe 2 launches and they basically said nah you don't if that's what you're worried about don't worry about it it doesn't cost us anything to keep the servers on poe running like boom he just you know walked them behind the curtain and showed them it doesn't cost us anything so it doesn't matter we're never going to shut it down now they believe Path of Exile players are going to be jumping, you know, at, at least that's what they'd like. They would like the Path of Exile players to jump between PoE 2 and PoE, the original one, right? Um, but again, honest, forthright, transparent as much as possible, straight to the facts, no BS, right? Like another style of leadership. Cool. Okay. So it looks like he's going to move on to PoE2. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. Um, it's the leadership style. Now, I do want to say I've been taking a lot of pokes at the Diablo 4 dev team. And, you know, my channel, I want it to be more positive than negative. But I can't control a game that I'm playing and it turns out to be in a bad state, unfortunately, negative tones, negative discussions are naturally going to happen because the game that I love and want to play is going through a bad period. And I hope it's just a bad period. And I know I would say 80% of the comments I get in all my videos are like, Sam, it's you. I don't understand why you're still complaining. Like, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but I do want to see it succeed. I do want the game to be here 
two, three, four, five years from now. Uh, like I said a million times, I think the game's got a good base. A lot of people disagree with me, but we'll agree to disagree. So I was thinking, like, you know, I kind of felt bad. Like, you know, I don't like talking. I, I want to try to maintain as much of a professional tone on this channel. And I felt like the last couple of videos, I really um, maybe went a little bit too aggressive with some of the things I said. You know, it's 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 a big organization and sometimes stuff, hap stuff happens and the people delivering that message are just that. They're the deliverer of the message. It wasn't their idea. So anyway, take that for whatever, uh, however you want to take it. But uh, we're not going to, this video is like 18 minutes long, but I just kind of want to highlight a couple of the questions that really show the leadership style. That's why, to me, we had this happen. You know, it's the leadership style. From the Blizzard higher-ups to Chris and Jonathan at POE, which are the higher-ups at GG Games, right? So, to me, that's a huge distinction that drives both games. It's clear to me in watching this interview that to Chris and Jonathan, it's important that they be super reactive, almost instant to any issues that are happening in the game and they don't look too far out and are only one league ahead. And we know what the Diablo 4 executive team, how they treat their seasons right so to me huge distinction and why we have this chart changing on august 17th anyway let me know your comments am i out to lunch what do you guys think do you agree disagree and i would love to hear your comments on the content of this video and for those of you that this is my first time this is your first time watching a video of mine if you want to get my opinion on Diablo 4 and everything that's transpired, you can go into my Diablo 4 playlist on my YouTube channel. And I strongly suggest if you're interested to go check it out, there's a lot of uh, opinions of mine in those Diablo 4 videos. And there's a lot of them. I am going to put one that's gotten the most, um, traction and a lot of feedback and a lot of comments in it and it's basically a video of me describing my opinion on why i feel uh diablo 4 uh executives dev team uh can't fix the game um so go check it out i'll put a link in the description and if you could like or comment on this video i would appreciate it and if you can subscribe i'd appreciate it even more I understand there's a lot of content creators out there, so no worries if you can, I understand. And for those of you that have commented and liked my videos and have subscribed to my channel, and the month of August was huge growth on my channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you that have supported me since day one and all of you new people that have been coming on board the last 30 days thank you so much it means the world to me i hope you enjoy my comment listen if you got any ideas throw them at the throw them in the comment section i'm all ears i'm always looking to provide you guys with what you want to see so i would love to get that kind of feedback as well so thank you thank you thank you everybody and as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time